My name is Pedro, this is Gonzalo, and we're here to introduce you to James, the Credit Risk AI. James helps your risk team to do four things. Building advanced credit scoring models that can predict who will default and with what likelihood, deploying those models into production, validating them and reporting them to the regulator, and finally, monitoring them in real time. Now, these four things that I mentioned, building models, validating, deploying, monitoring, these would normally take a full credit risk team about two or three months to complete. I can see we only have five minutes, so we should probably better get started. We'll start by building the model itself. This is a model built with machine learning. So what we will do is we will provide James with some raw data, which contains some loans, some of which defaulted, some of which did not. And we will let James start to figure out some patterns. What we're here doing here is also telling James where the dates are and what we mean by default. In this case, we're using two-year delinquency as a proxy. Now, because this is credit risk, we're actually going to start in an unusual place. We're going to start in validation and compliance. Because it's no point to, to find a really good model if then you're not going to get approved by the validation and compliance team and by the regulator. So the first thing Gonzalo is doing is actually defining what are our acceptable thresholds. What do we allow James to discover as a really good model? For example, a really good model can be work very well, but if the correlation between variables is too high, then it's not useful. So we told them that that was unacceptable. So we've got everything set up. We can start to actually go to the fun part which is to actually build the model. James contains natively the models that are used by top tiers. So both the traditional logistic regressions and the advanced non-parametric models. And crucially, also the tools to help the risk officer through the process of setting up. And this is the data page. At this stage, the risk officer has the opportunity to go and look at the data build new features if he so chooses, and potentially identify any problems that they might have with the data. It's also useful for, for instance, looking at correlations. Remember when we said that a correlation couldn't be higher than something? Well, James is now flagging that up. Also, James, by its own experience, can look at patterns in the data and suggest things to the, to the risk officer and proactively make suggestions as to how to prepare and bin the data. This is where the AI side comes up. And now for the really fun part. James has the ability to build very high-performing models because it's got a very advanced Bayesian optimization algorithm behind it. This is actually developed originally at CERN to find the Higgs boson, and it's one of the pieces of technology that we brought into, take it, into credit risk. So what's actually happening now is that James is running a vast search to look for the best theoretically possible model. Now, if you had one million interns, you could potentially do something like this. Everyone would run out, try and build the best possible model, and then the best ones would come back. In James, this probably would run for about one or two hours. We're obviously going to skip for, to some results here. So speaking of results, James has already run in over 20 banks and consistently, thanks to the Bayesian optimizer, been able to help them improve their historical results in under 24 hours. This is something we're particularly proud of, and it's something that's particularly important given the impor this importance of credit risk. The results page includes everything that a risk officer might need to validate that this is the type of algorithm that he wants to put into production, and also to set any business decisions and thresholds that might be necessary to the business. So at this stage, we're kind of going, OK, so we've ended the fun part. Now's the part where we're going to the painful side of writing a huge report about compliance and validation, which will probably take me about one or two months just to get everything ready and approved and validated and reported. Well, in James, reporting takes about five seconds. The reason for this is that the tool built the algorithm, so naturally it should also be able to report on it. And in the tool itself, the model is, is produced and the validation reports are. These validation reports include every single metric that a validation and compliance team wa might want to see and that a regulator might want to see from a Basel III point of view. This is also important because you are able to customize what your bank wants to display both internally and externally. So once you're happy with these results, the next step is naturally going to deployment. And again, traditionally, this deployment stage is a fearful stage where you start setting up meetings with IT to develop the roadmap towards the implementation of a model. Well, in James, deployment actually means going to the deployment menu and clicking deploy. 
Once you do that, you've got all of the code pre-prepared by James to either launch it as a web server, run it in the cloud if you so choose, or to actually have it on-premises inside your own bank. It also includes a test suite to be able to validate that all of the results are as you expect and do all of the necessary IT checks that your IT team might want to do. So naturally, after the model is built, the work is not done. It is crucial to continue to monitor the data and the model and everything that you have in production at every single second. And data monitoring is one of the things that humans aren't particularly good at because we get bored. Continuously checking things to see if they're still fine is not particularly interesting. But fortunately, machines absolutely never get bored and can continuously monitor every single day to see if things are fine. This is where humans and machines working together are at their absolute best. Now, this is all fine, but we're not always inside the tool. We're not always working on risk and doing these things. So what happens if, as we're talking in this room, something like 2008 is going on outside? Well, the short answer is sometimes no one is watching. No one is paying attention. And that is when, oh, sorry. Ah, it's actually from James. Unfortunately, James is always paying attention and can warn you and knows when to interact with humans to say that something is going on that isn't expected. Why is all of this so important? Well, it's now 2017, and the risk technology in the world hasn't really changed that much since 2008. It is crucially important that every bank have a top-tier risk department to help fight bad loans. And by using James, we enable your existing team to become a top-tier risk department. And if you believe that this is something that you can do in your own bank, and if you believe in our vision that every bank deserves a top-tier risk department, please come and speak to us afterwards. Thank you.